first is introduction first, dialyzer reuse is the practice of using the same dialyzer for the same patient for multiple treatments it is a safe and effective practice before going to the procedures first we see what the, what is reuse room the dialysis and blood tubing are washed in a separate room called reuse room it should be equipped with a with an exhaust fan the ro water should be according to ami standard the ami standard is the certain contaminants is the uh, how the maximum concentration in the water this is calcium to magnesium potassium or electrolyte there is a maximum concentration this is the next is endotoxin unit and colony forming unit according to the association for advancement of medical institute this am is according to the am standards what are the endotoxin acceptable endotoxin level and colony forming unit in our ro water endotoxin level must be less than 0.25 endotoxin unit per ml and colony unit colony forming unit should be less than 100 colony forming unit per ml fittings would be required in the water line at each reprocessing area a standard tubing to clean the blood compartment and a hansen connector for dialysis compartment if hansen connector is not available our venous or uh, blue or uh, red coupling of our dialysis machine can also used as hansen connectors the sinks used for reprocessing should have a depth of greater than 45 cm with a drainage mesh at a depth of around 20 cm around the half sink and around uh, around the half there is a mesh to prevent dialysis and tubing rusting in the effluent the types of reprocessing techniques one is manual and then is automated first we see how manual washing going on first step is rinsing while closing the dialysis blood should be returned with sufficient amount of normal saline air should not be enter the blood tubing or the dialyzer while returning the blood the dialyzer and blood tubing are moved removed from the machine and carried to the reprocessing area in a tray to avoid blood spills a pressurized rinse can be given to both and blood and dialysis compartment with ro water to clean the blood the next is the cleaning fill the dialysis compartment with 1% hydrogen peroxide for 5 to 10 minutes after that we connect the hands and connector to both the dialysis port and open the water tap for a 20 psi pressure for 15 minutes at that time cleaning will be done it is facilitated by reverse ultrafiltration from the dialysis to blood compartment reverse ultrafiltration continues until the effluent from the blood compartment is clear now nowadays all dialysis are coming with removable header header can be removed if the header is removed but care, to clear the clots special care should be given to check the o-ring and replace it properly improper placement of o-ring or failure to replace can if we forget to replace the o-ring it will result in blood spill when the dialyzer is used soon after starting the dialyzer dialysis we can see blood spills on the floor because there is no o-ring in the dialyzer if we forget to uh, Play, replace it then after that the blood compartments of dialyzer are cleaned with ro water the next is the test for dialyzer performance we are doing discarding the dialysis according to check after checking fiber vandal volume it is measured by displacing the water in the blood compartment with air and measuring the volume it is above 80% of the original volume we reuse the dialyzer i will show a video on how to check dialyzer fbv fill uh, first fill the blood compartment with ro water 
and remove the air completely by, by tapping the dialyzer gently. After that, we close the tap and close the one end of the dialyzer with thumb and disconnect the tap tubing. Then connect a 50 cc syringe at the top of the dialyzer and aspirate the water. Slowly release the thumb and upper side. And measure the volume. The calculation of FDV. There is all dialysis. There is a priming volume. This is Professor's dialyzer FIV sixty three. And 1.3, F6 is 78, and F7 is the priming volume is 96. This will be after uh, measuring the uh, amount, we were we were starting calculating the fiber bundle volume. Measured volume of water divided by priming volume of dialyzer into 100. Measured volume is now after checking how much we got. If we got 70 ml divided by this 1.3 meter square dialyzer is the 70 divided by 78 into 100 it's almost around 89 percent according to that we have to calculate the fiber bundle volume the dialysis should be discarded if uh, fiber volume volume we get is less than 80 percent the fourth next step is sterilization or disinfection after cleaning after we check, we check the FBV, after that we go to the disinfection. Once clean, both the blood compartment and dialysis compartment are filled with disinfectants for 24 hours to achieve effective sterilization. Don't forget to fill, in, both compartment have to fill. Dialysis compartment and blood compartment has to fill with the disinfectants. After that, finally, we are inspect the dialyzer. The dialyzer shall not be used if we have an abnormal or overall brownish discoloration or if there are so many clothes are in header or after washing, we see several bands of clotted fibers are present in visual inspection, then uh, no, no need to use the dialyzer. The next is labeling. Actually, this is happen first in the before closing uh, while we return to uh, bringing to washroom before that the labeling should happen each patient's dialyzer is individually labeled with patient name name there is a medical record number and date on which the dialyzer was taken and number of reuses what are the reuse today uh, my first use or the second use the number of reuse should should not be and some um, most of the dialysis unit have same patient same uh, with similar name two patients or three patients with similar name that we have to uh, write a name alert on that dialyzer and tubings the next is record keeping the number of doses of dialyzer is must be noted in the patient's record and fiber bundle volume also we have to note it in the patient's record. And when the dialysis is discarded, it should be recorded in the reuse register. Last one is storage. Dialyzer and blood tubing should be stored in sealed polythene bags or plastic boxes with lid in separate racks with patient name and MRD number. Next see 
What are the advantages and disadvantages of dialysis reuse? First is the advantages. Main the advantage is reduction in treatment cost because we everybody know how dialysis. What is the cost of one dialysis? And it uh, finally it gets uh, increase in the patient dialysis cost. That's the one ad major advantage is one advantage of dialysis reuse reduction in treatment cost. The next is reduced exposure to chemicals used in manufacture of new dialysis. Next, reduced intradialytic symptoms like first use reaction. But nowadays, it use sterilized dialysis are not uh, or dialysis are heat sterilized. That is why first use reactions are uncommon. And next is reduced immune system activation. Last one, enhanced biocompatibility. Because after each use, the patient's dialyzer fibers are coated with protein deposits. Protein coats are deposit in the fibers. That it enhances biocompatibility. Last one, less waste disposable. Because there is no waste. If reuse is going on, there is no waste. If uh, single use we are taking, if a dialysis center with uh, doing 100 dialysis per day, the 100 dialyzer and tubings has to be put in the waste. That's much large quantity of waste is accumulated in the unit because, uh, because of single use. This is the main advantages of reuse. So, but it has so many disadvantages also. First one is exposure to chemicals because we are using hydrogen peroxide, formalin, ranalin. That is exposure to patient exposure is there and staff also exposure to these chemicals. And sometimes priming is not happen correctly or inadequate priming can lead to formalin reactions. Formalin reaction means soon after starting, the patient develops sudden breathing difficulty and uh, pain in the fistula hand, the return. Venous needle, severe pain and uh, warm, warmthness in hold over the body, itching. All are symptoms of formalin reactions. Next disadvantage is blood leak. Because blood leaks, because we are, if not using the correct concentration of uh, cleaning agents, it happen, uh, blood leak can happen. High concentration of hydrogen peroxide, etc. can lead to blood leak. That should cause blood loss to the patient. During dialysis, uh, we have to change the, if blood leak occur, we, during dialysis, we have to change the dialyzer. That is a extra burden to the patient because that much uh, blood is lost to the patient. The other uh, uh, disadvantage is pyrogenic reactions. Because if, if, if we are not filled the correct amount of uh, dialysis uh, cleaning or disinfectant in the blood compartment and dialysis compartment, it may lead to pyrogen reaction. The la next one, loss of dialysis clearance and ultra ventilation cap cap capacity. After, uh, dialysis of, after each dialysis, the fibers are blood clotted mm -hmm. with blood. So many fibers are clotted each, each treatment. After each treatment, so many fibers are like clotted. And thus the dialyzer got the clearance. The loss of dialyzer clearance can happen. And there's a chances of transmission of in infectious agents from one dialyzer to other during reprocessing procedure. Because we are keeping all dialysis together in the, our reuse room. That's the chance of transmission of infectious agents or it's, uh, HBS, HA or any, anybody has that. It's a chance of transmission of that infectious agents to one dialyzer to another during the procedure. Next, we can see what are the chemical disinfectants used in dialyzer reprocessing. First one is formaldehyde or formalin. Formaldehyde is colorless and has pungent irritating odor. It is a saturated solution of formaldehyde. 100% of formalin solution contains 37 to 40% formaldehyde. It is commonly used as a disinfectant and it's used as preservation for biological specimens also. The oldest agent used for disinfection of reuse dialysis does not degrade or change membrane. Any Protein loss will not occur. That is change membrane, uh, not change membrane properties. It's low cost and it is a stable solution. 
it's required uh, dwell time is 24 hours but its side effect is it is highly carcinogenic and it is irritating to skin and eyes we know if formaldehyde is spillage occurs we know how what is the situation it is highly irritating to skin and eyes the next is hydrogen peroxide it is very cheap and best disinfectant it is a very effective agent for removing blood from a dialyzer it should not you know, remove protein deposits but it is also irritant to skin it shall be stored in airtight container the next one is renalin renalin is a mixture of paracetic acid acetic acid and hydrogen peroxide it's effective with all microorganisms such as bacterial sporocidal fungicidal the required time is only 11 hours the appropriate concentration is 3 percent when instilled into the dialyzer Called sterline, that is, it is not uh, glutaraldehyde free. It is effective against non tuberculous bacteria, HIV, and hepatitis. It is non carcinogenic. It is aldehyde and chloride free. No foul smell is there. It is safe for patient and staff. And less eye, nose, and throat irritation while using. <laughs> The next is personal safety. When we go to washroom, ensure that PP and especially Google's eye protective wear shall be worn during the reprocess reuse procedure because there's a chance of blood spillage to our eyes or chemical chemicals also uh, spill spillage uh, can happen chemical spillage to our eyes. Make sure that the sealing exhaust that's are working uh, functioning well. That is all about manual reprocessing system. The next is automatic dialyzer reprocessing system. Nowadays, several types of automated machines are available. It is reliable and safe. It is um, fully automatic reprocessing and disinfecting cycles are going on in that machine. It performs membrane pressure leak test. It is user friendly. It's also easy to operate because LCD touch screen is there. The selectable separate programs for all types of dialysis. There's a total cell volume measurement and display reverse alteration cleaning. But the disadvantage is needs high initial cost. And if uh, single station or double station, we need two or three machines in a center. To, uh, completely uh, when we completely depend on automatic reuse system, we need two or three machines in, in a unit. This is a single station, and this is double station, and this is multiple stores. There's multiple stations are there. Then next is how it works, how the machines works. That's an automatic reprocessing procedure. An automatic reprocessing machine has actually three connections. Then first is RO water connection with AMI standards. Second, disinfection tube to the machine and other ten end to the disinfectant can. Third one is drain line. What are the steps? Sir? It, it is the same steps as manual cleaning, but it is do it done by a machine. First step is uh, switch on the machine. Then the connect the dialyzer and select the model. Then select the station, then start process. Second step, rinsing and cleaning. While rinsing, reverse ultraviolation should shall take place. The cleaning process begins with creating a vacuum in the mixing tank of the machine. 300 ml, 2.5% disinfectant, Renaclean enters into the dialyzer. This solution shall be held in the dialyzer for few seconds to break any blood clots. Step three is the volume test. The setting is made as 80% for the dialyzer volume. If the actual volume is less than the setting, then the machine indicates fail status. And we cannot use that, better not to use the dialyzer. Next is pressure test. 350 mm HG pressure is generated by the air pump is supplied to the blood compartment of dialysis. 
hold the pressure for checking any leaks. Next is a fusion test. 200 ml of 3.5% Renaclin solution is filled into the dialyzer and bread compartment. Drain valves are open and more Renaclin solution is filled in the dialyzer. This test prevents any microbial growth in the dialyzer. Final step is the final value appears in the machine screen and we can take a printout of the values. What fiber bundle volume printout we can take from the machine. And it requires 12 minutes to complete the entire process. The last one is disinfection. Disinfection to the machine. After each shift, reprocessing machine shall be disinfected by selecting the disinfectant disinfection mode in the machine. The next is comparing manual uh, reuse with automated. Manual means needs more, more manpower. Two or three members to be uh, needed in uh, washroom duties. Second one, decrease in number of reuse. There is a mistake happen when we check the FBV. There is a chance of uh, kind of calculation of FBV. There is a chance. That's a decrease in use of reuse. There's a chance of cross infection. Then water pressure must be 15 to 20 PSA is needed. And FB is we check manually. But in automated machine, it is very easy method. The increased number of reuse, two or more dialysis can be washed at a time. And water inlet pressure is 40 PSI. Computerized data-based management is needed. It's lesser risk of infection to the dialysis person. Because manual, we are washing, filling the disinfectants. After that, the washing and again filling with the this sterilants. But this is a machine itself. Only we need to put, put the machine in the machine. And after cleaning, we put cap and remove the machine. That is that is lesser risk for infection to the dialysis personnel. In case of any membrane leak, the dialyzer is rejected and thereby prevents the blood loss. Any leak is there, the uh, dialyzer is rejected from the machine. Then that is, uh, the, the, then there can we can prevent the blood loss in dialysis during dialysis. Blood loss and can prevent. General aspects for reprocessing dialysis. Hepatitis C, we need separate reprocessing areas, and hepatitis B dialysis should not be reprocessed. And HIV reprocessing of dialysis is safe, but it is uh, washed in separate reprocessing areas. The next is advantages of single-use dialysis. First one is reduced manpower. It is the main advantage. And the second one is no exposure to chemicals used in cleaning and disinfection. No need to clean and disinfect them. That is uh, no exposure to uh, staffs and patients. The pyrogenic reactions can avoid it. If uh, our RO water has any contaminants in RO water, a pyrogenic reactions can happen to patient. Uh, 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 patient has uh, chills, fever, or rigors. Rigors are happen during dialysis sections. If we use single use dialyzer, these pyrogenic reactions can avoid it. This high dialyzer clearance. That is why efficiency of dialysis will be high. Because after these chances, earlier I told you the fibers are get clotted and the clearance will be reduced. But we use single use dialyzer, high dialyzer clearance can happen. And no chance of transmission of infectious agents. The, uh, not uh, going to washroom or reuse room, that is why there is no chance of transmission of agents. We need, need to, uh, no need to storage. Because no need of dialysis storage room in a dialysis unit. We, we fuse single use dialysis. The next one, reuse of plasma filters. <clears throat> it is highly, plasma filters are very permeable. This force is 0.2 to 0.5 micron. As available in 0.3 meter square and 0.6 meter square. It is washed in the same way, but we have, we cannot use hands and connector to the plasma filter. Its fibers will rupture and hemolysis will occur during the plasma filters. 
that is why same uh, we, uh, cleaning agents are using but we should not use hansen connector to the dial, uh, the uh, to the filter because it may rupture the fibers we can reuse the plasma meter not according to fiber bundle volume we can reuse the plasma filter if filter, we after plasma process we send serum globulin and filtered globulin to lab and uh, serum filtered globulin is greater than 50% of serum globulin then we can reuse The next one is optimization. How how we what is the uh, how we increase our use? First one is proper dialysis are to be decided by calculating the body surface area of the patient. That is the body surface area. We can calculate height into weight divided by three thousand seven hundred the whole square root. It is an easy method in our uh, dialysis unit. The cardiac all cardiac monitors has. There is a patient data, and we can we have to enter the height and weight into that monitor. Is a body surface area will automatically come. How, how, how much is the body surface area? And with from the body surface area, we can calculate dialysis surface area. This point seven five into body surface area. A proper dialysis has to be according to weight. Proper dialysis has to be selected. Proper priming techniques should be followed because uh, priming during priming there is chance of air should be and air can enter to the dialyzer fibers and it can cause clotting tendency. That's the proper priming uh, speed. The blood pump speed should be two hundred ml per minute. Not increase the speed more than two hundred. The whole priming techniques, uh, priming should be done in a 200 flow. If apparent line is washed, uh, use 150 ml. Only follow 150 ml per minute blood flow. And other lines washing, only uh, you, uh, do in 200 ml per minute blood flow. Because more flood blood flow means air, all air should be entered into the dialysis. And fibers are great uh, clogged with all air particles. That, uh, that we should decrease our reuse. Then proper anticoagulation should be followed during treatment because heparinization. We know if the patient is heparin-free dialysis for so many days, that the, the, the dialyzer we have to discard after two or three uses because it, it yeah, the fibers are get clotted during heparin-free dialysis. Like that, proper anticoagulation should be followed during each treatment according to weight. If patient's body weight, we have to follow the uh, anticoagulation. Adequate blood flow to be ensured from the axis. Uh, we have to uh, keep a 300 or 350 blood flow from the axis. If we are getting only 100 or 150 from the axis means the dialyzer is a chance of getting clotted during dialysis also and when we go to reuse room that dialysis headers and full of headers and fibers are full of clots. Let's uh, make sure that adequate blood flow. We have to keep the maximum blood flow during dialysis. Next, uh, avoid air rinse during termination. Because most of centers are uh, returning with uh, saline air technique. Because half saline and the remaining air, that will uh, reduce the reuse. If full saline means we have to return the patient's whole blood with full saline. Around 150 to 200 saline should be re returned while uh, uh, returning to the patient. Then blood loss can avoid and uh, this uh, reuse can increase. And some centers are heparinase saline is after disconnect, after uh, treatment, the dialyzer tubings and dialyzer are put in recirculation after uh, with saline, heparinase saline for five minutes. It also increase the uh, reuse. Avoid delay in reprocessing. Uh, better uh, wash the dialyzer as early as possible. Maximum two hours is the permittable delay. Within two hours, we have to re reprocess the dialyzer after pre uh, treatment. The next is uh, use proper concentration of disinfectants. Disinfectants must be diluted in proper correct concentrations and proper reuse techniques and cleaning 
uh, rinsing, cleaning, and filling. Thus, they all should uh, follow proper reuse techniques. Thank you.